I the meanest? Sure no. Am I the prettiest? Sure no. Am I the baddest mofo low down around this town? Sure no. Well, who am I? Sure no. Who am I? Sure no. I can't hear you. Sure no. Shogun of Harlem. What's going on, boxing heads? It's your boy, Cool Kyle Boxing, coming back at you with another boxing video for the boxing heads and the boxing eyes. Please smash that like button and subscribe to uh, Cool Kyle Boxing for more hardcore boxing content. So, Bob Arrow, man, he believes that the second fight between Errol Smith Jr. and Terrence Crawford will be a disaster, man. He's, you know, he said that, um, you know what I'm saying, the first fight didn't do that well, but the first fight did 650,000 pay-per-views to 750,000 pay-per-views. And um, so, you know, people thought it was going to do over a million. Um, you know, some of the reason for that is Bob Arum said that Bud Croft has never sold at top rank, and he's not going to sell pretty much anywhere else, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, he don't have the ability to uh, match his talent, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and put asses in seat. Um, you know, second reason is people think that Harrison Jr. should rebuild himself up, you know, saying to see if he still wants to fight, if he still wants, he has that fighter spirit, you know what I'm saying? They want to see him fight some big names, either at 147 or 154, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm guessing they're talking about Jerome Bucinis, Keith Thurman, or Virgil Ortiz, or Amanda Stanionis, you know what I'm saying, at 147. But up at 154, there's uh, Jamel Charlo, Tim Zhu, Brian Castano, who beat uh, Spence in the amateurs, right? And you got Erickson Lubin, right? And you got uh, uh, Ramos uh, Jesus, and you got Charles Cromwell, people he could fight up at 154. So if people want to see if Aerosmith Jr. is still in the game, if he still got that killer instinct before he gets back into the ring with a, a Bud Crawford, right? So they kind of written um, Aerosmith Jr. off and he's been very, very quiet. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, does that mean that he's getting his fight game together, getting himself in shape uh, for the rematch? Or does it mean that, you know what I'm saying, he's contemplating, um, you know, retiring from the sport. We don't know. Spence has been very quiet, but the rematch is on. He signed for it. So what version of Aerosmith Jr. are we going to get? But one thing's for sure, Bob thinking that this this uh, rematch is going to be a disaster, you know what I'm saying? Just because he attributes all the uh, ticket sales that was made in the first fight to the popularity of Aerosmith Jr., right? And not Terrence Crawford because, you know, um, but Crawford, his pay-per-view record is dismal, right? It's horrible. You know, he, he don't sell very well uh, in his fights. So, you know, the first the first fight, you know, say it generated, you know, good purses uh, for the for the fighters. You know, what I'm saying making at least uh, 20 million uh, per fighter, and um, you know, say it generated over 59 million in revenue. Uh, the ticket sales were pretty good. You know, what I'm saying we're talking about. Uh, 84.99, I believe, and you know, saying which you know, saying is is pretty good. You know, what I'm saying it's like, but it didn't do like a mega fight type numbers. You know, like over a million type pay per view type situation. But you know, boxing is still you know saying a, a, a fringe sport. You know, what I'm saying unless it's like a super huge you know names like Mike Tyson or somebody or you know, saying some somebody that everybody's uh, familiar with. You know, saying it's not going to these, these smaller weight classes are not going to generate that kind of money, right? But you know, Tank he's pretty popular. People tend to like taking. You know, say his pay per views tend to do uh, very well for you know the the uh, the times that we're in. So you know, what I'm saying, but you know, I want to see the second fight. Um, I believe it's going to be competitive. I think we're going to see something different. Um, even though Bud is highly talented, highly skilled, highly versatile. Um, you know, well, let's see if we can get Aerosmith Jr. on the snack program. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he'll, you know what I'm saying, have a better chance of uh, hanging with a Crawford in that ring. But Bob Arum, you know what I'm saying, he has no faith in uh, uh, Bud Crawford's ability to sell. And, um, you know what I'm saying, so he don't care, you know what I'm saying, what, what kind of spin anybody put on it. He just have no faith in Bud Crawford. You don't have to spend all them, them uh, years over there trying to make Bud Crawford a star. He says he has no crossover appeal as a fighter. 
you know, saying the marketing is terrible uh, behind Terrence Crawford. But his talent is up there, you know what I'm saying? So he's right now the king of the uh, what's Wake division, and uh, nobody has knocked him off the throne yet. And oh, he got that going on, you know, saying you there's really not much you can say about Bill Crawford, you know what I'm saying, except his inability to sell uh, boxing tickets. So, you know what I'm saying, I, I just, I'm ready for it. I'm excited for the rematch, and uh, which is supposed to take place, I think, in February of next year. Uh, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to be there, you know what I'm saying, this has been pulled kind of boxing. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more hardcore boxing content. Peace.